Hello brothers and sisters and welcome back to an all new Sermons in the Park. As always, I am your Reverend Jamie McCaskill. First off, let's address the uh, the elephant in the room. <laughs> um, those of you who tune in on YouTube are probably going to notice the quality of audio difference. Um, for those of you who are listening to the podcast, this is um, because I, t- I decided to go back to using... Um, my microphone that I bought a long time ago for the videos um, when I was only doing them Facebook Live I bought this really nice microphone to do that and um, then all the problems started with my computer so I decided hey if I'm going to start doing this as a podcast as well the people who, who listen to the podcast deserve um, better quality audio so I hope this uh, improved if it did, please, YouTube viewers, comment below that yes, the audio was better, or no, it's about the same. Um, I just want your guys' input on that. Um, um, also, this is the first podcast over on the podcast site. Wherever you're listening, I'm trying to get this uh, up on as many podcast sites as I can. I've got it uh, so far on Spotify, um, Anchor, which is the host of the podcast, as well as um, iHeartRadio. I just got iHeartRadio maybe 15 minutes ago. Um, so, yeah. Um, <clears throat> so, yes, the, the sermons will be up on Spotify, iHeartRadio, and Anchor FM. I am working trying to get it up on other ones. Um, such as uh, Google Podcast, which is actually one of the ones that I mainly want because with Google Podcast, you don't have to download no app unless you want to, and you just search for, you know, Sermons in the Park Podcast on Google, and it would pop it right up for you. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to address that a little bit. Um, and the reason I'm doing it is, uh, yes. Sermons in the Park will remain 100%. I do not get nothing um, for it. It's just uh, what I'm doing is making the gospel more ready for people. You know, because there are some of you who listen who who have in the past. I believe Jeannie was one of them. Um, Sheena, I believe, um, asked about it. And then there were a couple people who recently started at my job who said, uh, Preach, I would listen to you. Um, but I, do, I, 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 sometimes I can't sit down and watch YouTube, but I do listen to podcasts on Spotify and things like that. Um, would you be interested in that? And I did a lot of research. Um, some of you saw probably the posts on Facebook where I was saying, Hey, you know, I'm thinking about it. Would you be interested? Got some interest back on that. And I started researching and I almost gave up until a couple people, um, uh, some of my friends, uh, who investigate the paranormal and I, that I have worked with in the past said that, uh, to use this one specific anchor FM because they used it before and are, they are still using it. I think Dale Verkirka, I think he still uses it. Um, but they mentioned it and, and, um, you know, I was like, you know what, I'll, I'll give it a shot. Um, and, and to those, if you're one of those that I spoke with and I said, I tried Anchor FM, it wasn't Anchor, um, it was some other site, uh, I don't have it in front of me right now or I would tell you, um, that I was talking about and I, I, I confused the two, um, but that other one did charge you after, I think it was five hours a month, so, but I just want to get that stuff out of the way, so if you're listening on the podcast, I want to say welcome. Um, if you're if you're watching on the on um, YouTube, as always, welcome back. Um, it's it's just so wonderful to be able to deliver the message of you know the Lord's message here to you. And as I've said before, and I'll say it again, the whole reason behind this is to you know we we do this uh, got you know book by book, chapter by chapter, verse by verse breakdown of the Bible. But, you know, uh, it, it's a way just to help you get <clears throat> a deeper understanding. And, and um, you know, and because sometimes I break it down word for word. Um, if you watch on YouTube, 
you'll know, you know Miss Mary and a few others will tell you, I do. Sometimes I break it down word by word because words change their meaning over time. Um, just like I said, I want to give you a deeper meaning, help you understand things, maybe clear up some confusion that you've had. Um, maybe some of your objections so I can clear them up. Not always, but I try. Um, so before we get started, every week we bow our heads and we thank our Heavenly Father for all the gifts that He's given us. So go ahead and bow your head. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the things that you've given us, all the wonderful... Uh, you know, Father, I say it every week, but there's so much that you do that we don't even recognize. And we need to. And, and I, I hope that... Um, Father, we, we get better at that, and we, and we, we, you know, when we wake up in the morning, we should thank you for the, the gift of breath, the gift of life, the pure fact that we opened our eyes in the morning. We should be thanking you. The fact that we can feel with our fingers and taste with our tongue the things that you've given us. It's amazing, Father, and we thank you for that. We thank you for the ability to walk. There are people on this earth who can't even walk, and we don't thank you when we're able to. When we're able to crawl. When we have the energy to just get up and move. Thank you. Thank you for your son Jesus who gave us the ability to have a closer relationship with you. All of these things are gifts from you, and we thank you. We do not thank you enough, Father, but right now I want to thank you for everything. I want to thank you for allowing me to do what I do here each week. I want to thank you for giving me the energy to get up and go to work. You're amazing, and Father, we thank you in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. So if you're tuning in on the, the podcast, uh, sadly, this is the first episode. I am considering going back and adding the other ones late at a later time but right now I just uh, I, I'm not going to do that I'm just going to test the waters for a little while so you're tuning in actually at the second part of the sixth chapter of Genesis and you're not tuning in during you know Genesis the introduction that I made um, so I'll just kind of do a little bit of a recap I try to do that every week anyway last week we were reading where God had commanded Noah to build the ark and I told everyone uh, who was watching how how the ark and Noah the ark of Noah I should say is actually the same Hebrew word that is used for the ark of the covenant so here this week we will be finishing chapter 6 and we're going to start off here at verse 15 with a description of how the ark should look so let us go ahead and read, turn with me to Genesis chapter 6, verse 15, and we're going to read all the way to the end, which is verse 22. And this is the fashion which thou shalt make it of. The length of the ark shall be three hundred cubits, the breadth of it fifty cubits, the height of it thirty cubits. A window shalt thou make unto the ark, and in a cubit shalt thou finish it above. And the door of the ark shalt thou set in the side thereof, with lower, second, and third stories shalt thou make it. And behold, I, even I, do bring a flood of waters upon the earth, to destroy all flesh, wherein is the breath of life. From under heaven and everything that is in the earth shall die. But with thee I will establish my covenant, and thou shalt come into the ark, thou and thy son and thy wife and thy son's wives with thee. And of every living thing of all flesh, two of every sort, shalt thou bring into the ark to keep them alive with thee. And they shall be male and female. A fowl, after their kind, cattle after their kind, of every creeping thing of the earth after his kind, two of every sort, shall come up unto thee to keep them alive. And take thou unto thee of all food that is eaten, and thou shalt gather it to thee, and it shall be for food for thee and for them. 
Thus did Noah, according to all that God commanded him, so did he. So let's go right back. Now what we do here, if, if you're new, is we, um, we after we read the, the chapter, we go back and we look at the first verse that we talked about, that we read, and we break it down word for word sometimes. <laughs> so let's go back and let's reread what we started with here today was verse 15. <coughs> and this is the fashion which thou shalt make it of. The length of the ark shall be 300 cubits, the breadth of it 50 cubits, and the height of it 30 cubits. Now, I want you to remember, the ark is not designed for speed. And it certainly was not designed to be beautiful either. Okay, The dimensions that we're reading here are, for, are purely for stability. And they, because, I mean, you think about it, them, them waters are going to be turbulent, okay? If we go by the common belief, okay, and that is that a cubit is roughly about 18 inches long, that would make the ark approximately 450 feet long and 75 cubit feet, I'm sorry, 75 feet wide and approximately 45 feet high. A box that size is going to be very, very stable in those waters. And it's going to be impossible for it to capsize. Now, we discussed last week how the volume of the inside of it was about 1.4 million cubic feet. Which is equal to the capacity of about 522 railroad boxcars. And I told you that this would be able to carry about 125,000 sheep it had three stories on the inside. Each one of them was about 15 feet high, and and they were equipped with uh, <clears throat> with various rooms that were literally nests. Okay, now some people like to argue that there's no way that the ark would have held up, but you see, the ark was designed to God's specific directions. And this would make it perfect to hold up to the strain of those waters. This boat that we're talking about was able to house 45,000 animals. Able to cover several species of animals that, that we see on the earth today. Not only did God have Noah build that ark to a specific dimension, but he also had him put in you know, special places for these animals you know for their food and a place for him and his family to stay as well for the ark to function properly Noah had to follow God's instructions to the smallest detail just know that the 45,000 animals that I said that's purely me just estimating here we have no idea how many animals were on the ark. So, let's go look at verse 16 now. We read, A window shalt thou make to the ark, and a cubit shalt thou finish it above, and the door of the ark shalt thou set in the side thereof with lower second and third stories shalt thou make it so he told noah to do what to put in a window now now this could have been just you know a low wall that was probably close to the roof so that he could you know catch water for the ark maybe now some people believe that this was actually all the way around the ark you know up close to the roof and that it uh, was also to let in some light and ventilation. The door, that would have been used to you know, let in the animals and Noah and his family. So they can get in, you know, on and off of the ark. And like I said, we saw that it has three stories. That way the animals can be separated for their safety. for the you know, Not to mention their co cooperation during the voyage. 
this ship would have been very very complicated to build and it had to be done precisely I also believe that that this window would have went all the way around the ship and it was probably about 18 to 21 inches tall this would have given light and air and all of them inside the art inside the ship right think about that door though it had to have been extremely tall because it had to allow in animals like giraffes right like I said the three stories would have you know given a place for the animals to be separated and also for Noah and his family to live on so let's move on now to verse 17 and behold I even I do bring a flood of waters unto the ark unto the earth sorry about that I had to check my mic it, it uh, was acting kind of strange um, verse 17 sorry and behold I even I do bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all the flesh wherein is the breath of life from under heaven and everything that is in the earth shall die this is God saying that he will bring the flood of waters, right? We see the flood being mentioned several times in the Bible. Let's look at them. We see Job. Let me get out my, uh, my other Bible here. <laughs> Job chapter 12, verse 15. It says, Behold, he withholdeth the waters, and they dry up. Also, he sendeth them, and they overturn the earth. Then, let's look at chapter 22, verse 16, also in Job. Which were cut down out of time, whose foundation was overflown with a flood. All right? So let's leave Job now. Let's go into Psalms and look at Psalm 29 10. The Lord sitteth upon the flood, yea, the Lord sitteth king forever. Right? So let's go to Isaiah chapter 54, verse 9. For this is as the waters of Noah unto me, for I have sworn that the waters of Noah should no more go over the earth. So have I sworn that I would not be wroth with thee, nor rebuke thee. Okay? Now, Matthew chapter 24 verse 37. And this says, this is Jesus speaking here. And Jesus says, For nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. Uh, did, uh, I read the wrong one, didn't I? Yes, I did. It's supposed to be 37 to 39. I'm sorry about that. My microphone is acting really strange. I'm hoping the audio keeps up. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark. 
and knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Go to Luke chapter 17. Twenty six and twenty seven. And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and the flood came and destroyed them all. Now go to Hebrews chapter eleven, verse seven. By faith, Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. Now go look at 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 20. Which sometime were disobedient, when once the long-suffering of God awaited the days of Noah, while the ark was a preparing, wherein, a, wherein few, that is, eight souls, were saved by water. Okay, Second Peter chapter 2, verse 5. And spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. Okay? Now, chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. For this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of God the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water, Perish. Now, now bear in mind that this judgment here, and the verses that um, they make it clear of this one fact, was brought on by God himself. It was not Satan this time. It was God. Now, yes, it's terrible when Satan attacks. But you see, we have a defense against him, and that's Jesus. Okay? But this, this is, there's no protection from something like this. With this... You're under God's judgment. This judgment fell on everybody except for Noah and his family. And the few animals that, that God chose to reproduce on the earth. They had angered God and he brought judgment on them. Right? So let's move on now to verse uh, 18. But with thee I will establish my covenant, and thou shalt come into the ark, thou and thy sons, and thy wife, thy, wa thy wife, sorry, and thy sons' wives with thee. So, so look at that. God told Noah, but with thee will I establish my covenant. This stands in contrast with the whole, with, with the whole rest of creation. God is about to destroy that. He's telling Noah that he is going to preserve Noah and the rest of his family. They would enjoy the provision and the protection of having a relationship with God. This, is, of course, is the is another first here. This is the first time that we see the word covenant in the Bible. We see this covenant explained in Genesis chapter 9, verses 9 to 17. And I behold, and I behold, I establish my covenant with thee, with you, and with your seed after you, and with every living creature that is with you, of the fowl, of the cattle, and of every beast of the earth with you, from all that go out of the ark to every beast of the earth. And I will establish my covenant with you. Neither shall all flesh be cut off any more by the waters of a flood. Neither shall there be shall there any more be a flood to destroy the earth. And God said, 
This is the token of the covenant which I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for perpetual generations. I do set my bow in the bow to the cloud, and it shall be for a token of a covenant between thee with between me and the earth. And it shall come to pass when I bring a cloud over the earth that the bow shall be seen in the cloud. And I will remember my covenant, which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the water shall no more become a flood to destroy all flesh. And the bow shall be in the cloud, and I will look upon it, that I may remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, This is the token of the covenant which I have established between me and all flesh that is upon the earth. You see, because of his fellowship with God, Noah and his family, they're safe. God establishes his agreement, or as it's called here, his covenant, all right, with Noah and his family. They're the only ones who will be saved. Now in numerology, that number eight is an interesting because it means new beginning. God would begin, he would begin this with Noah's family. God was angry at the, per, you know, the perverse, that, that perverse generation. They were at the day of judgment. No, no, God would not tolerate their open and perverted sin. Even today, God is calling you to come into his ark of safety. Jesus is that door that you need to enter by. What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? Let's move on. Verse 19 now. And of every living thing of all flesh, two of every sort, shalt thou bring into the ark, to keep them alive with thee. They shall be male and female. I've been waiting to talk about this one. For all of you who think you know that this would not be possible. Are you one of those people who thought this is not possible? I need you to take the key out of your ear and listen to me for a moment. <laughs> Today on this earth, there are less than 18,000 species that are living. Okay? Now, let's say that you count all the ones that were extinct. Maybe they would, what, double that number? So, there were only two of each animal that was needed correct that brings us to a total of about 72,000 do you remember what I told you about the cubic feet how it could hold 120,000 sheep remember that the average land animal is actually smaller than a sheep so this tells me that there was less than 60% of the ark that was actually being used. I hear you. I hear you. You're saying, oh, but preach. What about the larger animals? How do you explain that? Well, simple. They weren't always large. When they were young, they're much smaller. Right? God, he wants to repopulate the earth. Why would he choose an older animal? Remember, God brought these animals to Noah. Noah didn't go get them. So what did God do? He brought younger ones. Makes sense, doesn't it? Alright, let's move along now. Verse 20. Of fowls after their kind, cattle after their kind, of every creeping thing of the earth after his kind. Two of every sort shall come unto thee to keep them alive. Now, like I said, there's a lot of room left. More than enough 
for those one million species of insects as well. Also, food for every one of them. We see that in the next verse. You see, food for over a year. God was planning on all of these couples to repopulate the whole earth. I remember as a kid, I kept thinking to myself, why, the birds is, why are the birds there? Now, as an adult, I know that, well, they would have had nowhere to rest, okay? Or even to make a nest so that they could, you know, repopulate. But what about fish? We don't read about them. But, I mean, come on. They don't need to be on the ark because the flood's not going to kill the fish. Now, for all those people who are thinking, oh, well, how did Noah go out and find these animals? Get the key out of your ear. <laughs> are you listening to me? Noah did not go. We're told that the animals came to Noah. The verse says, shall come unto thee. These animals, they knew that it was the only way for them to stay alive. So God had called them to be there. Noah didn't go get them. All right. Verse 21. Take thou unto thee of all food that is eaten, thou shalt gather it to thee, and it shall be for food for thee and for them. Now this stands out, doesn't it? God did not put the food on the ark. No, no. You see, God told Noah he had to go get it. And what you know what? Noah did all that work himself. This shows how he was dedicated to God and how God directed him. It was up to Noah to prepare. This calls to mind the famine that struck Egypt during the time of Joseph. Remember, God reveals the disaster to Joseph. And Joseph had to do all the legwork. He had to prepare for that famine. I said it once, and I'll say it again, and again, and again, as many times as I have to. God never changes. He reveals there is a problem to us before it happens, so that we can prepare for it. God will help us, okay? But He will not do the work for you. He told Elijah, go there, go there. He didn't say, don't worry, I'm going to pick you up and take you. No, it's up to you to do the work for yourself. All right, so here we are. We're at verse 22. It's the last verse in the chapter, all right? It says, thus did Noah, according to all that God commanded him, so did he. So, so Noah recognized the fact that the instructions were from God. Not only does he say, yes, sir, but he also does the work that, is, that, that he's told to do. Noah was a man of extraordinary faith. Just think about Noah here. It had never rained before. People probably were laughing at him, but not once. Did he stop doing the work? Not once did he stop warning everyone what was about to happen. Now, as I read this, I did notice that not once did we read that Noah's sons helped. We also did not read that they did not help either, though, right? But that did not stop that movie. Did you see that movie? <laughs> that movie says that they did. I'm talking about that movie Noah with Russell Crowe. Alright. As an overview of this chapter, I want you to bear in mind, sin was rampant on the earth. God judges that everyone but Noah and his family are lost. It was Noah's moral life it was Noah's faith that won God's favor. God shows Noah the way out. Now, I will tell you once more before we close out this chapter, we have our own ark of safety, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, next week we'll be reading about the flood 
and about all the preparation that that Noah had to take all right um, so uh, bear that in mind um, I'm, I'm hoping this uh, podcast works out well I'm hoping that um, um, you guys enjoy it and you go over to Spotify um, iHeartRadio I'm hoping eventually Google podcast and you give us a share uh, um, yeah should give us a share give us a thumbs up or whatever that that particular site has you know um, sign up or subscribe whatever follow I think uh, Spotify has a follow button but um, so I pray the Lord continues to bless you and keep you I'm hoping that um, he finds you in good health and that um, you'll continue to follow us here um, yes please do wherever you're watching wherever you're listening give us a, a subscribe give us a, a like you know, share this uh, podcast or video wherever you can get the message out um, you know I, I, I love doing the, this here and, it, and I've said it before and I'll say it again it's not about me it's not about what I want it's not about what this background behind me it's not about this microphone this computer it's about the Word of God and that's the important part and that's why I'm doing this that's why we're we're on Spotify now that's why we're on iHeartRadio now who knows maybe we'll go over to Amazon music I don't know wherever I can put this I'm gonna put it I want to get the word out I want to I want to I want people to come to God God wants you to come home. He's got his arms spread wide and he's saying, Son, daughter, come home. I want you home. And that is the important part. So, again, thank you. And I pray the Lord continues to bless you and keep you. And I'll see you all here next week for an all new, well, (laughs) or you'll be listening next week for an all new Sermons in the Park. Thank you and God bless you.